and a slide. Yes. Okay, generation. Chat. Okay. Sebelum ni pernah tak saya tunjuk uh, silicon wafer for solar cell? Have I shown to you any silicon wafer? Physical, physical one in the class. Nothing you Six inch by six inch, six inch. Nothing you Let me show you since I'm not in my office. Have you seen this before? This one. Have you seen this? So I'll take the camera. Oh, so at the background here, the the nisket. Ah, okay. So okay, right. So this is an example of that number. So I put the background at the back. So it's like a nisket. Ah, okay, right. So this is uh, an example of silicon with a uh, uh, square shape. Six inch by six inch. Okay. So look, I think that I'm lab is probably uh, most most of the time it's uh, the circle small one, right? The one that we have in our lab now is two inch, uh, two inch diameter. Um, so yeah, five centimeter lah, five centimeter across. But this one is like six inch by six inch, right? This size. So this is what we use in a uh, solar panel. Tapi ni salah satu sel, lah. It's called what this one piece is called solar cell since now we're talking about light absorption and flux and generation rate. So, so this is the example of the solar cell, right? Six inch, that one part clear, so by the background, six inch by six inch. So, the thickness, if, if I can show you the cross section, is very, very thin, it's only about uh, 180 microns. So, that's like twice of our hair thickness, but it stays intact, mechanically intact. So macam rambut kita cabut, kita balas rambut tu kali dua je. Dua lah rambut you tuck together. So so that's the thickness of this piece. So that's about 180 micron. And this is manufactured by uh, TS Solar Tech in Auto City. Kat Penang, Auto City. TS Solar Tech, a local company but now closed already. Uh, about two years ago, due to... Uh, Technology cost me a pressure lah from China. So we're going to discuss uh, that later on about when we talk about manufacturing and and we discussed a little bit yesterday on the techno economic stuff. So even though you can manufacture your technology, but if you don't have enough volume, uh, you don't have enough demand, business akan senang gulung tika, senang rugi <clears throat> dan bankrupt. So it happens to this company, TS Solar Tech, you can check out was forced to close 2019, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, right? So they used to manufacture uh, crystalline silicon solar cell 6 inch. So if you take this wafer, for example, ni baru satu je, baru satu je piece. This is only one piece. So to be able to have a solar panel uh, and to generate enough electricity on the roof or in solar farm or uh, wherever possible, so you need to have like 60 or 72 pieces of this Strung together, okay. String together uh, as a panel, macam panel gambar background saya ni, okay. So uh, strung, uh, string them together as a module. So barulah you dapat produce say 400, 500 watts, 600 watt, depending on the cell efficiency and the size, okay. So that's the example. It's very fragile. So sebelum ni bila when when I handle one of these pieces when I first bought, the first time handling. So I broke uh, this wafer into pieces in my office, but the terlalu brittle, it's very thin. And if you talk about solar technology, we're gonna uh, talk about it more later on when we talk about devices. Uh, the industry is going for thinner crystalline silicon wafer. Just imagine now it's already around 180 micron and and twice of hair thickness. It's already so brittle. So just imagine what's gonna happen if. Uh, the thickness is going down to say 100 micron, so close to our hair thickness, and the industry is going into that direction now. 
okay if um now it's already written if you imagine uh it operates at 100 micron with the very same automation the lab manuf mass manufacturing robot and everything yang handle the manufacturing it's going to be a lot of wafer breakage akan banyak wafer pecah during the operation okay because you may not be able to use the very same set robot settings and everything the movement the rpm the speed um and many more robot parameters to be able to handle thinner wafers as compared to the current 180 micron wafers because it's just going to increase the wafer breakage Kalau increase wafer breakage then the yield is going to be uh, low okay so that's part of it uh, when we talk about generation rate okay let's recap we discussed yesterday about generation rate absorption depth and it was already clear to you i believe and we have discussed that the generation rate is um has this sort of uh, profile as what you can see on this uh, slide okay so exponential reduction of the profile as uh, the flux uh, gets into uh, thinner a uh, thicker uh, thicker portion of the wafer okay kalau masuk lagi dalam then the 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 flux and the, the generation rate uh, reduces accordingly right so next one is uh, thermal relaxation to thermal equilibrium so this is more like thermalization so a simple model for the recombination generation mechanism we're going to we're going to learn about recombination of this don't worry yet okay mechanism states that net recombination u is proportional to the excess carrier density so that means uh we're going to have a higher recombination recombination here means uh we're going to have annihilation of both electron hole pairs okay transition number two if you, if you can recall it's transition number two so before this we have discussed about transition number one which happens from valence band to conduction band where your valence electrons are excited so this is generation okay generation one is generation and on the other hand the opposite transition or we call transition number two in order to explain more easily we call this as recombination where the excited electron uh, goes back to the valence band and any highlight uh, uh, we're going to have any highlight between uh, electron and the hole and they're gone okay so the net recombination rate the transition number two the rate of that will be proportional to excess carrier densities so the more carrier densities you have in your silicon uh, we're going to have more recombination rate okay more net recombination rate no net recombination takes place if the semiconductor is at thermal equilibrium because uh, it's, it is a uh, is already stabilized if you like stabilized therefore they, there's no more recombination rate right the net recombination only takes place before equilibrium is established for low injection small disturbance for example low injection expression for the net recombination rate in a p-type semiconductor is given by the below so in a p-type remember so the net recombination rate is given by np okay np minus np naught okay np here is what um uh, electron concentration in p-type material okay that's why i i, I underline the p-type semiconductor here so the moment you see subscript p or subscript n like that so the subscript shows the material type of material so in this case np is the uh, electron concentration <clears throat> in p type semiconductor and the one on the right is a uh, whole concentration in n type semiconductor okay so for this particular case for uh, equation above we're talking about uh, in p type semiconductor so that's why the equation requires you to calculate np <clears throat> electron concentration in uh, p type minus electron concentration in p type at thermal equilibrium okay np naught means uh, electron concentration in p type material at 
the thermal equilibrium. So you have to understand this. Okay, these three stuff, huh? P and naught or N P naught. Uh, so when you mention N P naught, there are three things. N P naught means density of electron or concentration of electrons in P type at thermal equilibrium. Okay. Can you us? But we're going to use this a lot after this when we want to do calculation in PN junction, minority carrier and stuff like that. And the same is uh, applicable to PN not as well. Uh, electron, uh, a whole concentration in N type material at thermal equilibrium. Okay. Not here means thermal equilibrium. So minus those two, that will give you the delta N. Okay. The delta N. Oh, sorry, delta N. So remember, this delta N is in P-type semiconductor, okay, over uh, tau E, okay, tau E. Tau E is the minority carrier lifetime for electrons, okay? If you want to see the tau, uh, another one will be tau H, okay? Uh, minority, carry, minority carrier lifetime for a uh, whole, right? Tau E or tau H. So dividing this delta N, versus tau e will give you net recombination rate of electron in p-type semiconductor okay so np minus np naught equals delta n over tau e lifetime of electrons and the same goes to hole as well okay hole then we're talking about n-type material n-type semiconductor and then we are interested to know the net recombination of hole. Okay, not net recombination of hole in n-type uh, semiconductor. So the equation will be Pn, which is um, density of hole in n-type minus density of hole in n-type at thermal equilibrium. Okay, we are not remember these three things. You you should be able to. Uh, describe the meaning in three, three, uh, we call three points, okay? Density of hole in N type at the equilibrium, three items, okay? So over tau H, minority carrier lifetime for hole in N type uh, semiconductor, and, and that will be simplified as delta P over tau H and equals to UH, net recombination rate of hole in N type semiconductor, right? So when optical generation is suddenly switched off, uh, okay, we, we're talking about optical generation when we when you turn on the light and you are generating excess carriers in the semiconductor on top of the equilibrium carrier concentration, the delta N, right, or delta P. So the moment you turn off the light, for example, so we have discussed about um, thermal equilibrium and steady state, right? Remember? If you keep turning on the light, so that's called steady state. You're introducing external agent acting on your semiconductor material in order to generate excess carriers. But however, if the light or uh, if the illumination is constant, we call that a steady state. But in this case, when the light is switched off, so kita on So if you plot, for example, if you want to represent this graphically, um say density of electron so you can say that something like that you turn on the light then you're going to generate some level of uh excess carriers and then the moment you turn it off it's going to decay you're going to have a decay back to the equilibrium value okay need light off huh? light off doesn't it off okay so the carrier population or the concentration of carriers, holes, or electrons will tend to return to the thermal equilibrium values. Okay, they can patah balik uh, kepada equilibrium values over time by the process of recombination. So we're going to see recombination right after this. Penggabungan semula, recombination itu penggabungan, penggabungan semula. So we started off last time, if you remember, electron will pass. Then we break the bond by excitation, we generate electron and hole independently, and then they will recombine again. Not as a pair though, but then they are annihilated. They call recombine, but gone, right? So this process is called recombination process. And it will happen in like femtoseconds. So femtosecond proper the order of magnitude 10 to the power of. Femto nano uh, pico. Order that? 
15, right? Minus 15, yeah? So, nano minus 9. Minus 2, minus 2 apa? Pico, kan? Pico second, right? Uh, 15 femto. How about 18? Minus 18. Micro, nano, pico, femto. 18 apa? 18 kita jarang guna. Oh, tak belajar tu lah. Cuba, cuba search sekarang. Can you search now online? What is 10 to the power 18? So, what's the unit for that? What do you call that? Milli, micro, nano, pico, femto. A lot of A, I think. <coughs> Just search 10 to the 18. Anyone? Siapa yang jumpa, tolong tulis kat sini in the chat box. Ah, atur, right? Femto atur. 10 minus 18 is atur. Okay? So, hari ni kita belajar satu benda baru. Atur. So, the spelling is like that, yeah? Is it? Fahnis and Akilah. Double T, yeah? Uh, um, a T T O, yeah? Alright, cool. So, 10 minus 18. But this, uh, if you're talking about this uh, order of um, recombination process, it's normally around femto, uh, pico to femto, lah, usually depending on the device, right? Depending on, on the materials. So, it's very, very fast, okay? If, for example, if you try to blink your eyes, you should blink your eyes. How long, how long does it take for you to blink your eyes? Is it in microsecond? Can you blink your eyes in microsecond, for example? Or millisecond? Blink secepat mungkin. Well, you can try yourself. Jangan tidur lah, you blink ya. Right. Eight hours, that's too long. That's last night, okay? That's not blinking. That's consistently uh, equilibrium your value. All right. So relaxation of the thermal equilibrium still. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> if you relate back to the to what we've learned before, okay, on the concentration of the carriers. So we have a, an n naught plus delta n, and also p naught plus uh, delta p, for example. Okay. So in this case, uh, uh, just like what I talked, what I talked to you now, when you turn off the light, so this is when you turn on the light. So you're gonna generate the carriers of delta um, p plus p naught for whole, and then at at t naught you're gonna turn off the light or excitation is excitation is no longer there. So you turn off here. <clears throat> okay, then you're going to experience, the carriers are going to experience a decay in the concentration due to uh, removal of illumination source. So there's no more optical excitation, right? You remove, remove the excitation. It was on steady state because of constant exposure to illumination, but then it's removed after this point, okay? So, <clears throat> yeah, the net recombination is given by uh, the, the given equation, right? So now let's look at recombination. What is recombination? So recombination is recombination of electron and holes and uh, resulting in annihilation of both. Electrons lose energy and stabilize back to the VB. So it drops back to the VB, recombining with holes. This process is called recombination. So basically, there are three types of recombination in the bulk semiconductor. So there are three types of recombination uh, processes. Okay. Generally, it's a recombination, but we have to know which is the exact recombination mechanism taking place in our semiconductor materials or semiconductor devices. So the first one is called radiative recombination. Second one is called SRH, named after these three guys, Shockley, Reed, and Hall. Shockley, Reed, Hall recombination. And the third one is called Auger recombination, okay? So out of these three, only the first one is radiative in nature. Only, only the first one is radiative means uh, upon recombination, you're going to have photons emitted from the semiconductor material. So you're going to see light emission. 
So that's only happening from the first one. The third, uh, the second one and the third one are called non-radiative recombination. Right? If you want to categorize this three, so you can categorize into two types, radiative and non-radiative. The first one is radiative and obviously radiative. The second one and the third one are non-radiative. They're called as Rage and OJ uh, recombination. Okay, if you look at the below illustration, um, 6.1. So the first one is what we've been talking about, the first transition, electron hole generation. And the second one on the right is the recombination process, the second transition going back, right? First transition going up, a second transition going down. Okay, so next one. <clears throat> okay, recombination can happen by three processes. Uh, well, it's not necessarily one process at a time. Uh, it depends on the situation, right? Depends on semiconductor materials, depends on uh, doping level, depends on defect level and stuff like that, right? So let's see what are they, uh, why are they there in the first place? What contributes to the recombination mechanism? Right, uh, the first one is radiative recombination and also called band-to-band -band recombination. Okay, radiative is band to band, same thing. Okay. Um. Right, uh, the second one is SRH recombination or also called trap assisted recombination. Trap assisted here means it's due to presence of traps. Trap knee is usually defects. Color your defects in a semiconductor, you're going to have recombination number two which is SRH, or also called trap system, okay? The third one is called OJ recombination, and it involves three particles, three particles dalam, dalam recombination. Huh? So you, you can see this illustration, for example, before we see the animation. So here you can see that we have two electrons and one hole, right? So on the other hand, we can also have one electron and two holes. So OJ process there involve three particles. It's a three particle process. So let's see after this, three particles. So they occur in parallel independently, hence the recombination rates are additive in nature, superposition, depending on uh, what type of recombination you have at that particular time. So you may only have one, you may have two, or you will probably have three as well at the same time. So it really depends on the situation. So now let's look at the animation on this uh, page. So I say unshare and go to the PV CD ROM. All right, let me share with you now the website. <clears throat> okay. Right, can you see the web page? All right, good. <clears throat> okay, so you can come to the PV Citadel website and you can go to 3.3 .3 recombination and these are all the stuff that we're going to cover in this lecture. Lifetime, diffusion length, and surface recombination as well. So, yep, you can go to the notes here. They are basically similar to what we have gone through just now. So, recombination number one is called radiative recombination or band-to-band -band recombination, same thing. Uh, number two is defect-assisted or trap-assisted or also called shock rate hall. And the third one in our slide uh, is OG recombination, okay? So let's look at this animation so that you can see more clearly of what uh, each of the recombination uh, looks like, right? So let's have a look. Band to band recombination, okay? Electron in the connection band recombines with a hole in the valence band. Tadi yang atas tu drops down to the valence band and giving off energy as a photon, right? Light emission. So that's why we call it 
band-to-band -band recombination or also uh, radiative recombination because it emits light. Okay. Second one, defect system recombination or chocolate or horror recombination or trap resistor recombination. So in this recombination, it's also called trap resistor recombination occurs via energy gap, uh, energy level in the band gap. Remember last time when we talk about uh, trap states, remember when I talk about impurities, if you have um, undesired impurities in the band gap, so they will appear as an electronic state in the band gap. So they will also uh, end up as uh, trap states in the band gap. Okay, that will induce recombination uh, due to SRH, shock period hall. So let's see. Next, so electron drops, it moves to the uh, energy level inside. So it can be shallow trap states near the band edge. But it can also be the deep one, deep level defects that we discussed last time, like iron and whatnot. Right, so which are which is uh, the most dangerous one to the semiconductor devices, uh, releasing the energy either as a photon uh, or multiple phonons, so typically in in the form of phonons. Okay. Next, so then electron and hole recombine, releasing energy as further photons or phonons, typically phonons. Right. Next. Okay, this is the third uh, recombination mechanism. Mechanism we call it OGA recombination. It involves three particles process. Okay, it is three particle process or involves three particles. So in this case, we we can say that this OJ is EEH. I normally call it E. Uh, now you just uh, say E recombination, EEH, and the other one will be E recombination, EHH. Okay. So in this case, the illustration shows. Uh, e recombination, EEH, two, two electrons in one hole. So what happens? So the electron recombines with a hole, giving its energy to, to the second electron. Okay, below the recombining hole, the energy difference is passed to the second electron, pushing the second electron higher up into the connection band. And the second electron will be excited due to the energy uh, given off by the recombination of the first pair. Okay, electron hole, young first one, recombine, energy difference will be passed to the uh, second electron, and as a result, you'll be excited further up. Because okay, so the extra energy, yeah. so it'll be further up, excited into the uh, conduction band. Okay, the electron gradually gives off its thermal, uh, its energy, and relaxes back to the band edge. Okay, so they can eventually thermalize, right? <clears throat> And you can and play here, same thing. So what happens if you have eh? Then recombination will give, a recombination of the first pair, electron hole, will give the, the energy to the second hole, and the second hole, second hole will be excited, not excited though. Kalau nak tengok illustration ni, it's going further down, lah, further up, further into the band, uh, valence band. Dia akan masuk ke dalam valence band. Okay? Cuma yang dia punya direction tu, if you look on the y axis, nampa is going down, lah, but it's actually going further into the valence band, right? Due to the extra energy uh, passed by the first pair recombination. Right? So you can see all the explanations here later on. You can come here radiative, defects, and OJ. Okay? So let's look at uh, what are the details of each. Okay, let me go back to the slides. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the slides. Can you see? Just in case. Cool. All right, so let's move on. Okay, only band to band is radiative. The first one is radiative and it's called, um, uh, it's also called band to band recombination. And the other two, uh, SRH uh, and OJ are non radiative and they, uh, they do not emit light. Okay, they do not give off light. Instead, uh, the energy is passed as phonon, is transferred as phonons. Okay, heat to the lattice. Okay, same illustration here. You can see uh, another. Uh, form of illustration to 
to show a non-radiative recombination. The first one is uh, due to deep level defects uh, and also called as a rich recombination. And the second one is a three particle process or also called um, Auger recombination. The one on the left involves uh, two holes. The one on the right involves two electrons, right? So the one on the left is eh, e -H -H, and the one on the right is e -E -H -E, a recombination. And the third one is radi radiative, it's all band to band, and it gives off photons uh, after the recombination process. Okay, let's go to each. All right, uh, radiative recombination or band to band recombination is the inverse process of electron hole pair generation, okay, uh, uh, by light, some more, okay, to be more specific, inverse process of electron hole pair generation by light. So that means what happens after the recombination is exactly what happens in. Um, in a device which requires light absorption in order to generate electron hole pair. Okay, remember transition number one and transition number two. Radiative recombination here is ready, uh, transition number two, whereas uh, creation or generation of electron hole pairs stated here is transition number one. Okay, if you want to be more specific, if you're talking about optical excitation in order to generate electron hole pairs, which requires light will be generating electron hole pairs in transition number one. On the other hand, radiative recombination is transition number two, which emits light. Okay, so Masonia, if you compare optical excitation in transition number one, it's exactly the inverse of <coughs> radiative uh, radiative rec recombination by transition number two. If you want to relate this to a device or to two opposite devices, what are the devices that you can, re you can relate for transition number one and transition number two to be equally opposite? So anyone? So now we're talking about the mechanism one and two, but if you, if you want to compare the device at device level, so now based on your understanding, what is the device for Transition number two, yang saya tunjuk tadi kat atas tu. In the opposite of uh, device number one, dekat generation by light tadi. So anyone can give example of the opposite, device two and device one, for example? Anyone? How about, sebagai nama, since there is no, Cornelia. So what's the example of device number two? The inverse process here. What is what's the example of the device that shows that thrives on that works on radiative recombination? I got, I got, uh, based on the current understanding, based on current knowledge, what do you think is the device for this inverse process? Any idea, Cornelia? Ah, LED, right? So LED. So LED, uh, when you say, uh, okay, LED, okay, exactly the same, right? So LED, yeah, that's true. Uh, it's based on radiative recombination process, okay? So here, the LED that we are using now in, you know, your uh, indoor lighting or mana -mana LED system, so it thrives on or it works on radiative recombination, okay? And then we're going to see later on at device level, how do we actually create the radiative recombination in order to produce the light, okay? So probably we'll call OSRAM into our class and share uh, some bits of their uh, knowledge on, on the uh, LED operation and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so number two is LED. So how about device number one, which is the exact opposite of LED? Anyone? Eventually, in this course, you want to relate all the semiconductor physics to the sem semiconductor devices. Yes, yeah, solar cell. Good. So, uh, device number two is LED, which thrives on radiative recombination. And on the other hand, for mechanism number one, uh, is solar cell, which thrives on or which works on 
optical excitation or generation of electron hole pairs by uh, absorption of light. Okay, so maksudnya kat sini, we learn that uh, LED is the opposite of solar cell, right? And that's the, that's the thing. Um, the operation of an LED is the exact opposite of operation of solar cell. Okay, and that's why if you look at one, later on I'll probably um, upload one video to you. Um, there is called, there is a mantra. Mantra ni macam kata-kata kata-kata mantra by a professor Yablonovic professor Eli Yablonovic I'm going to sh uh, share with you the video later on Yablonovic I think in Berkeley or something or oh, California University of California or Berkeley I think okay he said he said that his mantra is a good LED What do you think is the continuation of this sentence? Is a good what? What do you think? Anyone? A good LED is a good. Uh, no. Well, uh, the principle is based on a combination, of course. But this one at device level, solar cell. A good LED is also a good solar cell. This is a mantra popularized by Professor Eli Blonovich. Okay. Okay, a good LED is also a good solar cell. So if you can relate this device uh, opposite operation to the fundamentals that we learn here, here and there. So it makes sense, but we have to see what are other details at device level. Tapi in terms of their physical mechanism, uh, they are uh, the exact opposite of each other, right? So the inverse process is radiative. And on the other hand, solar cell, we need to use light to generate electron hole pairs. And for LED, we want electron hole pairs to recombine to generate light, right? So this is the exact opposite process. Okay, we'll come back to that. But you can go back and reflect on this mantra. Why a good LED is a good solar cell? Cuba pahamkan kenapa, kenapa macam tu? And what does it take for this mantra to be valid? Okay, or can it be not valid under certain conditions? Right? So you can look into that uh, later on. Right, a conduction band electron falls into a valence band hole, giving up excess energy as light. So, uh, the the turun ni pada atas ni ke bawah, so we've seen that just now. So the excess energy is given off as light, and this also called band-to-band -band recombination. Exploited in LEDs, so this mechanism is exploited, is used in LEDs, is used in lasers, and most important direct band gap, and is most important in direct band gap semiconductor like gallium arsenide. Why is it most important in direct band gap semiconductors? Can it also be in indirect band gap semiconductors like crystalline silicon? Boleh tak? Kalau kita pakai laser ke LEDs based on crystalline silicon, the bulk version of crystalline silicon, or some other indirect uh, band gap. Boleh ya? Can you get good LEDs? Can you get good lasers? What do you think? Cannot? Okay, I'm going to say cannot. Kenapa? I'm going Why? Why cannot? Will I unmute, uh, Amiro? Let's go on for uh, Go ahead, yep. Because the direct uh -huh. band gap cannot uh, emit light. Ah, uh, right. Because indirect band gap cannot emit light. So it won't be efficient. It won't be an efficient LED. It won't be an efficient uh, laser on your device, okay? So that's why when we talk about a radiative recombination, we are looking into direct band gap semiconductors only. Okay, but but uh, uh, last time we also discussed about changing silicon into direct band gap, right? So if that's possible and uh, the efficiency is high in terms of the radiative recombination, then you can also use um, the modified material like crystalline silicon 
in direct bank gap situation, in the case of direct bank gap, to produce uh, uh, devices like this, okay? But generally, we use direct bank gap, so like that, like gallium arsenide and some other uh, nitride or whatever, right? So detection of radiative recombination is the basis of photoluminescence imaging. Anyone working on PL for your FYP? Anyone working on PL? Tada. Tada good, eh? Photoluminescence. So that's the basic principle in uh, photoluminescence. You want the electron hole pairs to recombine, uh, emitting light, and the light will be detected at certain wavelength. And that will actually reflect. Um, the wavelength emitted, the wavelength of the light emitted will actually reflect the band gap of your material, right? Because the energy due to the recombination will be given off as heat. So the energy here will be equal to the band gap, right? It's about energy difference, right? band H to band H. So that will be equal to band gap. So for from photoluminescence imaging, maybe photoluminescence imaging, the Y is the intensity of the light and the x is the wavelength so you're going to have something like that for example so you need to see where is the position of this peak wavelength okay so if you're talking about zinc oxide for example then it should be should be getting somewhere 380 nanometer for example okay 380 nanometer then you can convert this wavelength into band gap and you will get the band gap of your material okay so you can use PL uh, detection, PL characterization, in order to identify the band gap of your material, utilizing this radiative recombination principle. So I'll just stop here uh, first, then we're going to continue next week on this radiative calculation and other recombination mechanism as well, followed by lifetime diffusion length and we're going to finish with this uh, generation and combination inshallah on monday okay and then we're going to move on to uh introduction to pn junction okay so next week is already week six and week seven and then mid sem break right and we, you're going to have your uh, test one in week number seven let's talk about it later on but it's going to be in week seven okay so any questions so far on the recombination mechanisms. All good. Can you follow so far? All good for now. Yep, good. All right. Okay, then I'll see you next week, inshallah. Bye bye. Take care. Assalamualaikum. Thank you.